Hello there everyone, this is Mr. Brass, and today I'll be talking about a rather serious topic, child sex abuse. Now, very often we hear about this stuff in relation to religions, specifically the Catholic Church, but for the purpose of this video I'll be focused on its occurrence in schools. My purpose of making this video is to bring awareness to this and educate people on how to try to prevent said sexual abuses from happening. To define our terms, sexual abuse is the engagement of a sexual act with another person who is incapable of a praising the nature of the conduct, or is physically incapable of declining participation in the sexual act. A fixated abuser is a person who chooses their targets and spends a lot of time winning the trust of people around them so as not to get caught. An opportunistic abuser is a person who takes advantage of the situation they are in and goes with whomever they feel is right. These sexual acts often include fondling, oral, anal, or vaginal penetration, along with showing students porn and or flirting. Such abuse in reality is very common, sadly, with 3.5 million students reporting having physical sexual con with an adult and 4.5 million for non-physical sexual con for non-physical sexual assault. In the paper by Carol Shackshaft entitled Educator Sexual Misconduct, a Synthesis of Existing Literature, a thousand researchers, policymakers, and educators were contacted in order to get a better grasp on the situation. Generally, studies documenting such cases are conducted with two methods, one based on incidents and the other based on prevalence. Incidents focus on focuses on official reports to criminal and child protection agencies. Prevalent studies ask children and adults if they've been sexually abused by an adult. Because of this incident, rates are generally incidence rates are generally lower than prevalence since many children get sexually abused and don't report it to the authorities. Only about 6% of child sexual abuse cases go to the police. Pedophilia and hebophilia in of themselves are psychosexual disorders that are characterized by the sexual preferences for pu prepubescent to adolescent children. Now, not all pedos and hebophiles engage in sexual acts with children, and many never act on it, see seeing it as an immoral pervasion. Also, not all sexual contact with children is delivered by people who are hebophiles or pedophiles. Most offenders in schools are male teachers. Same-sex engagements happen, but just so you don't get the wrong idea, sexual orientation, i.e. being straight or gay, isn't an indicator in these studies, most male teachers who engage in sexual acts with male students often identify as heterosexual and are often married to or in relation with a relationship with a woman. Most of the time it is female students who are targeted and not males. Black people are overrepresented and being targets of sexual abuse. Sexual offenders in schools use their position of power to manipulate students in order to engage in sexual acts with students, often giving them more attention while increasing contact in order to test their silence along with giving threats in order to ensure silence if otherwise. Offenders often seek vulnerable students whom are easier to control and because of their position of power it is unlikely that someone will call them out on it, especially if they're a popular teacher. Very often offenders have great records and this is done so it is less likely someone who does know about it will call them out, who does call them out on it, will be believed. Most often the students who report being sexually abused are initially ignored which makes them think the teacher can't be stopped. Very rarely do police officers get involved and most cases aren't entered in criminal justice information and thus really only the school acts on the allegations within the privacy of their employee records. Many times no formal investigation is given. Student victims of abuse suffer a decline in academic success and are scarred for the rest of their life. They often drop out of school and engage in drugs and have a hard time developing intimate relationships due to a lack of trust. Also millions of dollars are spent responding knew the claims, all of which, if proper measures were put into place, could have been minimized and could use the money for other purposes, so outside of it being horrible for the students, it's also horrible for the schools. Very often the abusers get off, get off with just little punishments. In New York, there was a study that went into 225 cases of uh, educator sexual abuse, where teachers admitted to sexual abuse, and only 1% of the teachers accused lost their license to teach, 35% in general received a negative consequence, 15% were fired, and most shockingly enough, 25% received no, relatively no, consequence, with at best being reprimanded off the record. As much as 
90% of the cases involved the, the teachers just leaving the district with all their benefits intact and even were given positive recommendations from the schools. While there w hasn't been really any studies showing the effectiveness of prevention studies, there are some ideas of what to do that will help reduce the numbers, such as developing policies, having more thorough hiring processes, with people to train on the spot, with people trained to spot red flags and applications, and they it's good to report all allegations to the police, educate students and staff about unacceptable behavior, etc. Also, a good way of spotting an opportunistic abuser is by their tendency to have teenage-like behavior, along with a history of boundary problems. Many male and female teachers li like to take the sexual contact as indication of romantic relationships, and often feel like it's okay because the victims happen to be teenagers. Staff members of the school will often say that they didn't report the incidents because they were afraid that if they were wrong that it would ruin the life of the teacher and most programs geared to stop abuse is more about teaching children what to do and not the adults which needs to be changed so both have the duty to know what to do if they are seeing something they think is going on. Well that is all for today. This is Mr. Brass saying goodbye and get wise.